I'd like to say good evening to everyone, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine and Physical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is not a Oh, wait, a Pam. There's no sound. Okay. Is your light on? My light's, yes, my light's, my light's on. on. Did I plug it into the wrong one? Maybe. I plugged it in. I probably plugged it in wrong. Action. Work out well. It's Frank. Frank knows how to do I'll take care of it. Yes. Good evening, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the year in the year um, 1958 in the state of California and since that time we've gone about to establish branch schools throughout the United States, Canada and certain other foreign countries. This Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time I'd like to introduce you to the Dean of our Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison, and the Vice President, Dr. John Cometti. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The correct name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which has been improperly substituted by Lord. The correct title of the Word or Son is Elohim, which has been improperly substituted by God. And the correct name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, which has been erroneously substituted by Jesus or Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for himself. Jesus is the name, but it's an erroneous name. Would some investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, the Greek, nor the Latin languages contain any characters or letters that would produce the sound made by the letter J. The letter J didn't come into the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything in the universe. We have Yahweh symbolized in His pure spirit state as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn the cloud all the way around the edges of the chart and everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape, and took on form right within himself as Elohim, the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form appears in divine visions and is understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests in a fleshly body and walks the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? 
a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It's called a divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. He instructed Moses to build one exactly as he had seen it in the wilderness. It consisted of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Now also in this school we go about to show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now in this school we have ten primary constitutional aims and objectives and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, creed, nationality, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid, and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to, ninth is to uh, make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men, whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the New Earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. And this evening, we will have the lecture dedicated with a prayer by Dr. Jen Miller. That will be followed by our scripture, which is Psalms, the 19th chapter, 1 through 7. And all our scriptures will be read this evening by Dr. Trissy Bennett and Dr. Deb Cometti. Uh, and then we'll have guest acknowledgments by Dr. Trissy Bennett. Good evening, class. Let's take a moment bow our hearts and our minds to our Heavenly Father, Yahshua, and thanking Him so much, more than our minds can even comprehend, being able to thank Him for bestowing His grace upon us, because we know without His grace, we wouldn't be able to see His family secrets, and we wouldn't know that we were part of His family and just ask him to keep us strong in his faith and keep us calm from the, the cares of the world and to stay focused on him. And with that, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evening class. I'll be reading Psalms, um, ninth, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7. I'll be reading from a King James Bible, and I'll be inserting the true names where needed. 
The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. That was Psalms 19, 1 through 7. I'd like to say again, good evening to all of you, and welcome you to our school, where we continue to learn more of Yahweh's eternal purpose, pattern, and plan. We have a visitor with us tonight from our Tampa, Florida class, Dr. Carol Miller, and I'd like to welcome her, as all of you. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and a pleasure to be with all of you, my family, as always. So with that, I'll take my seat. Thank you. And for our first speaker, I'd like to introduce from our Tampa, Florida class, Dr. Carol Miller. <laughs> Hello. I was thinking on the way into class how um, unbelievable it is how we all came in here. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told my story, but um, it's just incredible when you think about it because you do think it's you <laughs> deciding to come in, but it's really not. And um, my son came in first which was a story in and of itself because he went, he got a little bit of exposure to it, correct? And then went all the way to Michigan <laughs> to attend uh, college, came all the way back. Well, no, first of all, he got a little bit of exposure to it. So goes all the way to Michigan, um, attends, this college, and he kept going by the IDMR. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Oh, there's the IDMR. <laughs> Left college, went, came all the way back, ended up at his old job, and lo and behold, he's on the night shift, sitting there with somebody right in class, talking mm -hmm. to him every night. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that in and of itself was like, sort of meant to be, I think, but anyway. So he started talking to us about it, and um, his sister picked right up on it. She said, oh, I don't know. I don't know what he's into. i, I got to check this out. And so Scott happened to know about Dennis out in California, and we were out in California at the time. <laughs> so I don't know how many times my daughter called and talked with him extensively about this teaching. And sure enough, um, he came on up with a couple other people from the Oceanside class and introduced us to class. And actually, I had been in here, I think, a couple times first when I visited. So I, I want to say maybe three, four times at least he came up. And that was a long drive. I, I think it was like eight or nine hours, something like that. And, you know, we had the full two-hour classes and all got together after. And um, my daughter started talking about, well, maybe we should move down south so we can go to class all the time. And I was all for it. I don't mind moving. I kind of <laughs> move around. <laughs> Southern California, that sounds nice. All right. 
and she couldn't talk her husband into it. No, I want nothing to do with it. He wanted nothing to do with it. My husband was sort of, I think, kind of on the fence, but probably if we went, he would come with us. And <laughs> sure enough, um, somehow, I think she talked, my daughter talked her husband into it. He, he relented a little bit. Oh, you can get a job down there doing this, this, and this. And so anyway, um, we all decided we were going to do it. And they put their house on the market. They sold it. Wanted to try to do it by owner first. The first person that came to look at that house bought it and gave them their price. And I mean, that was like incredible. Our house went right away. And we kind of knew, you know, this must be meant to be. So we, we all moved there and had several, several good years, you know, in Oceanside and just learned so much there. And um, I just think different times, I think, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll take a, a night off, not go to class. <laughs> but it never, it never happens. And somehow I keep ending up at class. So I, I'm like petrified of lightning, and the lightning is so bad in Tampa, you know. So I said to my daughter, I just want to tell you ahead of time, if ever, because we get these hellacious storms, you know what they're like, <laughs> if we ever get one of these really bad storms right at class time, I'm probably going to be late because I'm not going out of my house <laughs> if it's like the lightning is, you know, really, really bad. And do you know in all these years, it's never, ever happened, <laughs> ever. <laughs> I can't believe it because every after, late afternoon we get those storms and it's never happened. I don't know, there's just so many weird things that have happened to me. Like sort of related to class, like he's not going to let me not come to class no matter what I do. He is not going to let me not come to class. <laughs> so um, I learned a lot through the years and um, you know, I think like my knowledge isn't at the level where it should be, but I know we always say we're where we we're where we should be, right. and um, I know the one thing that sticks out in my mind is when I can see the the lie out there with all the churches and everything and what they're teaching is so far off from the truth that I always say to Scott, I really can't believe that I believe that for like 50 years almost. Mm -hmm. And, but, but I did. I mean, it just, I don't know, when you grow up in it, you know, when you're young and that's all you know and that's all that's pushed on you. And I went to a Catholic school too for like six years and graduated out of eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Got into high school and um, we were all bad when we got into high school because they like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. They sort of like prodded us and helped us and, you know, and we, uh, huh? Brainwashed. Yeah, brainwashed <laughs> us. And, you know, we just had to be so good. They were so strict and everything. We got in high school, we thought, wow, we got all this freedom now. and. <laughs> We all end up in summer school that year, unfortunately. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, but anyway, so I just want to say that we, we think it's us, but it's not. And, um, you know, we just have to be so fortunate that I know we all have our own little story about, about how we came in here. And um, once you get to know this teaching, you, you, I knew that was the other thing I said. I there's nowhere to go because you, you can't go back and listen to all that stuff that they're telling you. You know, you just see that it's all wrong. And so you just, when you get to that point where you know there's nowhere else to go, you know you're in the right place. And I'm just going to end with that. Right. So, thank you. Thanks, Carol. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ann Hodgins.
have all my notes on here. Hopefully it doesn't die on me. Uh, <laughs> I do remember Scott being at Hillside and <laughs> my sister banging on him, you know. And well, she, you know, and she said to me, she goes, why don't you talk to him? I said, I'm sure he's had enough of you. It's okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> can we start, I just have something really, it, it's simple, I won't be up here long. Um, can we just get Psalms 19.1 and then, please work, there it is, uh, Job 12.7 and then Romans 119.20. Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Okay. Just, um... <clears throat> Want the next one? Yeah. Okay, Job 12 and 7. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knows not in all these that the hand of Yahweh hath wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Okay, and then Romans. Romans one nineteen. Because that which may be sorry, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of Him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You have the whole creation is screaming at you okay there's a god i exist and here's all the proof mm -hmm. and people yeah. blind to it mm -hmm. <clears throat> um my brother-in-law passed away early november not wally um <laughs> <laughs> there are others yeah. um, and it was about couple weeks after the funeral, um, my mother-in-law had started to hit her. Her oldest son passed away. And she kept asking Chris, do you think he's in heaven? And of course, Chris, as soon as they were moved out of the house, no church, done, gone. <laughs> you know, so she's asking me, and I'm like, I'm trying to explain to her, knowing that it's the, the state of mind she was in, trying to suddenly hammer and shove class down it where it wasn't going to go anywhere. So I'm trying to explain to her that heaven is a state of mind, okay? Um, <clears throat> and, you know, she wasn't grasping it, so I, I tried to tell her, you know, that you know, he, he, he may resurrect. She, she at first didn't want to have him cremated because, you know, then what's going to happen to his body in heaven? It's like, um, <clears throat> and I told her, I said, you know, I, I kind of went through a death, burial, resurrection with her and kind of sure I said, you know, every year when you guys, you put those, those seeds in the ground, you know, and then you cover them up and it goes in one way and it comes out another. It doesn't matter if you cremated him or not because he's not going to come back with the same body he went into the ground with. Right. You know? <clears throat> but um, I don't know how I got sidetracked on that. But um, the whole creation is screaming everything. And I had, um, God, it was many, 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 many years ago. Um, Fran and I were playing a Bible trivia game. Okay, where trivia isn't trivial. Um, <laughs> and it said something about uh, the apple in the garden. And Fran was like, it wasn't an apple. And I said, then what was it? She goes, well, you'll have to find out for yourself. Well, gee, thanks, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always ever helpful. Um, <clears throat> So I went through and I asked a few more people and somebody told me, well, it was an olive. And I said, well, how do you know it was an olive? They said, go through your book and find it. So finally I broke down. 
Uh, and I just have a few references. Uh, Genesis 8.11. 1 Kings 16, 23 to 33. 1 Kings 6, 23 to 33. <clears throat> and then Matthew 21 and 1. I think. The first one's Noah. I'll go that. Genesis 8 and 11. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Okay. They were resurrected. Uh, there was a resurrection already in the earth because he sent the dove out and the dove came back with something. If there hadn't been any resurrection in the earth yet, then they wouldn't come back with anything, okay? But it was significant. It was an olive branch, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and Kings? Yes. First Kings 6, 23. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive tree, each ten cubits high. And five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub, from the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure and one size. The height of <clears throat> the one cherub was ten cubits, and so was it of the other cherub. Okay, did, and, you, did you, I don't want to have to go through the whole thing if you don't have okay. to, but did you already say it was made out of olive wood? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. And first, I'll read it again, 23. Okay. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive tree. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oracle was the most holy place. And the two cherubim, I mean, if you do the math, because it's written in cubits, um, if you do the math, the wings on these things were 15 feet. Okay. Now, granted, the temple was obviously more glorified than the tabernacle, but those wings and the cherubim were like 15 feet each by seven and a half. Mm. These things were huge. Mm -hmm. But they were made out of olive wood. So again, you have olive wood up in the most holy place. You have an olive. And then <clears throat> Matthew. Did you say 121? No, 211. 211. Sorry. <coughs> Matthew 21 and 1. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage and the Mount of Olives, then sent Yahshua, then sent Yahshua to disciples, saying unto them, Okay, I know the Mount of Olives is on one of these, and I know it's in the book. Ah, there it is. Most holy place. <clears throat> in your body which is probably the one thing that like grabbed me about class. There's always that one thing, not just that brought you in, but that like kind of grabbed you and kept you. For me, it was the body. Um, in the most holy place, you have what's called an, here, I'm gonna ruin it, um, olivary protectal nucleus, which is on either side of the brain stem Oh, let's see, where's the brain stem? There it is. It's on either side of the brain stem. As a matter of fact, on here, it's a little bit lighter in color. Those are the two um, nuclei. Either side of the brain stem in the most holy place. And what they do, what they're responsible for, is they are central to the pupillary reflex. 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 In other words, they control the opening and closing of your pupil, of your iris, mm. so you don't let light in and out. Um, it coordinates the output of signals for light reflex. Now, Genesis 3 1 through 7. Genesis 3 and 1. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Yahweh Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh Elohim has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Keep on. I and want um, where your eyes will be open. Um, keep going. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For Yahweh Elohim doth not, doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and right. you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right there. You eat this fruit, olive, your eyes will be opened. Hmm. They ate the olive. Their eyes were opened. We're hiding in the bushes because we're naked. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to show that despite what we were taught in church or by our parents or grandparents, whatever, it was not an apple, it was an olive. <laughs> Personally, I don't like olives, so I wouldn't have had an issue with it. But um, I just wanted to show that principle of the olive there in the most holy place, bring it down to your body, and that just tells you they were not eating an apple. It was an olive. <laughs> Plain and simple. And that's all I got before I die into a coughing fit here. Okay? Thank you. Can I have the pointer in? <laughs> I mean, if you want to borrow it and take it home. Oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Carm Warren. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Um, this is actually one of my favorite scriptures that we have tonight. And I did enjoy what Anne was talking about. I remember there's a scripture where it talks about Yahshua cursing the olive tree. He cursed the, the branches or something. Do you know where that fig is? The, was it a fig tree? I thought it was a fig tree. Okay, no, then. I could be wrong, but I thought it was a fig tree. All right, then never mind. I was going to join it together, but if it's not, I won't do it. Um, we came back from Hawaii and I was telling the people on Thursday it's kind of funny because we usually go to all the conferences and like that's our vacation and it just seemed really odd to be somewhere where there wasn't class <laughs> it felt empty even though you're looking at the beauty that Yahweh provides in places like that. I mean, it was blue skies and it was just gorgeous. But they also have, I was reading that there's like 20 different weather zones and they have 15 occurring all at the same time just on that one island. Because it's, it's like desolate with all the volcanic um, formation and then you go south and it's um, real lush and green. Um, you go to the east and it's always raining on the west side it's sunny um, you find different kinds of beaches white sand black sand green sand it's just a variation and it's so diverse and it's it's interesting to see how you know Yahshua just did everything all in one place mm -hmm. but I was happy to come home and we're very tired. It takes 24 hours, and it, we haven't really caught up with the ride there or the ride back. I mean, mm -hmm. on the plane, it just kind of wipes you out. Um, I liked what the prayer talked about with um, family secrets and being a part of his family, because really, the only things about certain people's families, they know. And I went to a wake last night. Um, it was someone that I grew up with. I went through kindergarten 
um, all the way through grade school and then high school and he passed away and um, I was asking where one of his cousins were because I, I actually taught with her um, way back when and we recognized each other and we were only in kindergarten class together and it was funny that we both realized it was <laughs> but um, one of their friends was telling me and he was whispering and telling me this family secret about something that had happened you know and kind of they drifted away and it's you know it's something that you wouldn't know unless you were part of the family and and he was real close to the family so with her talking about it we are very fortunate that we are part of Yashua's family and I think that's what I really missed being away even though you're part of Yahshua's family no matter where you are I missed my brethren because this is my true family my spiritual family is here and there's no class there um, in the scripture let's read it start at 1 19 and 1 of Psalms the heavens declare the glory of Elohim and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. You know, you can look out and you realize after coming here that you can see a death, a burial, a resurrection with the creation all the time, or blood, water, spirit, 40. It's just something that now that we're in tune, we notice it. And we can hear his breath just within ourselves and within the creation the wind the sound of the ocean it's it's beautiful when you're part of that family and you know what you're listening to keep going for their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race mm -hmm. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. It's interesting, it talks about a circuit, because we know he had to go through um, coming out of pure spirit into this super incorporeal form, and then into a physical state of existence, and back a round trip, just like the priest coming in to the... Uh, court roundabout and then he goes into the holy place and we know once a year he's got to make atonement for himself in the tabernacle and the people but he goes through so this is a round trip as well so we're looking at a circuit all the time even the earth goes through circuits the um the movement of the earth itself on its axis the death burial resurrection with the with the seasons everything if you look at it goes into some kind of circular motion or circuit um, pick up seven seven the law of Yahweh is perfect converting the soul the testimony of Yahweh is sure making wise the simple now this to me is one of the prettiest um, verses because I know Bill and I had been in class for quite a while and we went to the 95 convention in Duluth and the two of us looked at each other with our mouths open at, at a certain time while Dr. Gill was on the floor because we had all these witnesses that were adding up but we were never taught about a soul being converted and at that time they were teaching spirit soul and body in a body yeah so it was like four four types of pieces to this puzzle that made no sense and when he started talking about us having a soul that's converted or restored or renewed mm -hmm. um, it just made sense and the witnesses that we had were all there it was just that we weren't given the opportunity to see it in that type of format mm -hmm. you know when somebody lays it down and it's so pretty and you've got all these other witnesses it's like wow yeah mm -hmm. and you know that you were dead when you came here because you didn't have that right heart like in Ezekiel that it talks about um, this this scripture talking about there's no speech or language his voice 
um, there was something that Ann got. Um, let's get it again because I thought that was pretty. I didn't ever see it there before in Job. Um, Job 12, I think it was in 10. Job 12 and 10. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing? See, it's in whose hand? It's in Yahweh's hand. Our soul belongs to him. It's part of, he gave it to us. He made Adam a living soul when he gave him the breath of life. And it goes on to say a little bit more. Go ahead. And the breath of all mankind. And it's his breath in us. And that's why when you hear our breath, it's Yahweh. Mm -hmm. We He's our creator. He, he signed us with that breath. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was beautiful, and it goes along with this scripture so well. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot to talk about tonight. I'm just very happy to be back and to be amongst all of you and to be back in class. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy seeing things, but... I, you know, I always thought I wanted to live in Hawaii. Bill and I went... Um, Shortly after we were married, because he was, he was working and was um, set to go to Oahu for, I think, two weeks, Bill, is that right? He was working there, and he told me if we could just muster up enough money for my plane flight and, you know, a little bit of money for me eating in Hawaii, I could make the flight there, you know. We barely had enough money at the time. We were just married. So we managed to get enough, and we went to, I went to Hawaii, and stayed with him, and um, when his work ended, we did some traveling around, and we went to two other islands, and I remember saying, oh, I want to live here. It's beautiful. It's just so beautiful, and I just couldn't believe how the temperature was always around the same. It's like between 77 to 80 constantly. It's just gorgeous, and it's not too hot. It's not cold. You know, the wind kind of cools you off, but that was before going to class. And there's no class there, so there's no way I want to live there. I mean, I would love to live in warm climate, but it's not paradise someplace else all the time like people think. Right. Paradise is what he's given us inside of us, and we are so blessed, and you realize that. And I think with that, I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Thank you, Carm. Welcome home. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Syracuse Branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison. Actually, watching uh, I watch CBS News every morning. You know, I put it on, and I do exercises. It's something to watch while you, you know, listen to what's going on in the world while you're exercising. And they had this expert on, and he was talking about. The origins of Christmas. And he was talking about the tree. And he was talking about how it came down through history, what it represented. And, and the, you know, the people said, well, what about mistletoe? He goes, well, that came from the Druids. <laughs> He said it originally was a, a thing that they put in their homes <clears throat> for a, a symbol of good health. And it eventually evolved into, you know, the thing where you got a kiss under it and all that. But uh, they asked him all these things. And he, he knew the origin of every single one of them and took it way back in history. 
And they were going, oh my, oh my. And then they go, well, we're still going to do it, aren't we? And they all go, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's three women on there and a man. And I like them. They're very, you know, they're very well spoken. They're smart and everything. And they all, yep, we're all going to do it. Right. Yeah. Like, they didn't care about anything the man just said. You know, and I don't think he cared either. Right. He wanted to do Christmas too. That's just the way of the world. Uh, it's funny. I, <laughs> I had something in my mind, and that's why we we put this up here and uh, I remembered I'm carrying an article around and it's completely different than what I had in my mind <laughs> but that's what it is and you know this was a good article because it had uh, this National Geographic was, uh, they, their search for sacred texts. They're trying to go way back in history and they're trying to open up these texts and see what they say without them turning to dust. You know what I mean? They've de developed methods that they can do that now. And uh, they went into, this one, and I can show you the picture of it right in here. They went in here in the, the most ancient Aramaic that they have found. And it says the word, it, it was to the Greeks somewhere, I forget where, and it said Yahweh right in there. It's talking in Aramaic and it said Yahweh. And it says right in here that it said Yahweh. Not Jehovah, not, a, not, any, not any of that kind of nonsense. Very good article. Very good. But that's not what we're going to talk about. <laughs> here we go. This is something we haven't talked about in a long time. And it's, uh, it's something that I, I, I like very much. And this particular scripture, not the entire thing, but the seventh verse, when we went to Los Angeles and when we went out to all the branches uh, in New York, we used this particular verse, Psalms 19 and 7, at every single one of them. Every single one. And we had the, the excerpt, and I have it in my briefcase, read uh, from Dr. Kinley's lecture. I forget which one it is, but it's, it's right in there. Um, I think it was, you have to die to go to heaven. And he says right in there, we're right in there, he says, uh, um, oh. now, the, now the carnal mind has to be changed. It has to be transformed. It has to be, and, and he go, you know, he goes on and he says it right in there. And we had that read at every one of these places. And you would think, well, that's the founder saying it to these people. It's now they can't say that's me saying it. That's the founder saying it. They still don't care. They're not going to hear it. If it's not what they want to hear, they're not going to hear it. People, you should see the people scowl at you. <laughs> yep. Oh. 
know, he ends up saying, it has to be elevated to another plane. He says, uh, it's where I live. I don't live here. I live there. Something, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. But it's, it's something. I mean, he says right in there, the carnal mind has to be changed. It has to be transformed. Now, that's the whole point of this. That's what it's saying right there in Psalms. That's what it's saying. Yep. And that's the importance of it. Let's, let's uh, go to the, um, the scripture there. And I want to get to, don't let, me, don't let me forget to get to, let me write it down. Now that I wrote them down, I'll forget that I wrote them down. <laughs> Go to the scripture reading, if you would, please, and just read the first couple verses and then go down to seven for me. Now the heavens declare the glory of Elohim. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Right here in the creation. See? The heavens declare the glory of Elohim. And the firmament. The firmament. See? These are the heavens. This is the firmament. This is land. This is firmament. And the firmament showeth his hand of right. So that's most holy place, holy place. Go ahead. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth forth knowledge. So now you got night and day, right? Now you got the physical in there. Now you got the physical creation involved. And we take the physical to understand something spiritual. And that's the importance of this. That's the importance of this. It's earth shaking. It's monumental. Now, uh, Go ahead and go ahead down to seven. Seven. Psalms nineteen and seven. The law of Yahweh is perfect. Now the law of Yahweh is perfect. Here's the law of Yahweh. Right here. And this is the same as this. Yahshua, Yahweh Elohim, they're one and the same. This, it's all Yahweh, but look, they're one and the same. Right or wrong? That's right. So this is the law of Yahweh. This is the law of Yahweh. This is perfect. This is perfect. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Now hold that there. And go to Romans, the 8th chapter, and start reading right in the first verse. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in the Messiah, Yahshua. Now, there is therefore now. Now, he's saying now. When he says now, he's talking now. Since what? Pentecost. Pentecost. Since Pentecost, since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on mankind, since it's been made available on a permanent basis, 
This is the first time this has happened. This hasn't happened before. People have had the Holy Spirit before, but what happened? It left them, right? It, it was temporary. Now it's being made available permanently. Once you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. That's the difference between this age and everything that came before it. I'm talking, see, what, see where the dotted line is? It says Pentecost right there. There's the dove. It, symbolize, it symbolizes the, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Made available to all mankind. And when I say all mankind, I mean those who would receive it. Those who are called according to his purpose. Everybody's not called. Everybody's not called. And it says right in your book, those who are called. Those who are the called. There's various references, okay? I'm not going to take time to get those right now. But uh, go ahead and continue to read in Romans. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. They, they're not, it's not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But now, see, this condemnation that was put on mankind all the way down from Adam coming out of that garden and it was put on mankind all the way down until here. And now it's lifted. And now it's gone. You see, sun down, sun up. Sun down, sun up. And the same thing was on the Babylon chart there, which we never got to. If you look on the right hand side, it says it shows mankind coming down. And then the serpent coming out of the garden and going down through history. And then it shows mankind coming up. That's really just this right here. Put on the fringes of that chart. And really, with all the history and everything that's going on, that's the purpose of that chart. It, it's to show man coming down and man, man being brought up again. But it's Joshua that's doing it. <laughs> it's Joshua that's, Joshua that's controlling it. Now, but now, but now, and it's so important because it's coming after that seventh chapter, and, and the gist of that seventh chapter is that Paul is saying, look, what I wanted to do, I wasn't able to do. What I knew was the right thing to do, I just wasn't doing it. You see, you understand? That's the way he... He was describing a carnal mind. He's describing just how they were back here, Israel. They knew the law. They knew they were, what they were supposed to do. Did they do it? No, they couldn't keep it. You see? Now, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but now, now, hey, there's been a big change that's been made right here. Big. This begins a new age. This is a new age. This was... <laughs> This was as much of a flood 
as this was. This was an outpouring, just like this was an outpouring. But they, they saw this one back here. They were banging on that door. Let us in, please. Wait. We're sorry. Oh, we know you were telling the truth now. Let us in. It's too late. You understand? But here, they never saw it. They never saw it. They clean, clear, missed it. Big change. But now, go ahead, keep reading. For the law, for the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life, look, which has been in operation all the way down through. Spirit law, the law of spirit life, one and the same thing. But now, Spirit, uh, the law of the spirit of life is going to be made available to mankind on a permanent basis. This is a big difference. Now it's big. This, this is different. This hasn't happened before. The law of the spirit of life, go ahead. In the Messiah, Yahshua. In Yahshua the Messiah. Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. Whatever your law of sin and death is. Whatever it is. Whether it's your own personal church. Whether it's the Catholic church. Whether it's the Muslim church. Whatever it is. Whatever condemnation it was. Whatever, whatever manifestation of condemnation or guilt of guilt it was, you're free of it now. Free. Now, you're free of that. See, that's a big difference from this from this, from this, from this. It's a big difference. It's night and day. Night and day. Hath made me free. Hath made me free. Now, go back. Um, I think that's what I want there. Dad. Go back to the scripture that, and reread the seventh verse there, please. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect. The law of Yahweh is perfect. Look, the law of Yahweh. The law of the spirit of life. Right or wrong? Right. hath made me free. Right? right? From the law of sin and death. That's how your soul's converted. That's how. Now, um, keep reading there. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, or the testimony of Yahshua is sure. Now, let me ask you something. I apologize for my voice, but what is the testimony of Yahshua? What is the testimony of Yahshua? He says, says the testimony of Yahshua, right? <clears throat> or the testimony of Yahweh Elohim is sure. is sure. 
or the testimony of Yahshua is sure. Making wise the simple. We were all simple, simple when we walked in here. And we didn't know one thing. So we had to be made wise. Now what was the testimony? The gospel. It's not hard. How the Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. And how that he was buried. And now how, did, how he resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures, the law and the prophets. That's the testimony of Yah that made the simple wise. Blood, water, spirit. Death, burial, resurrection. How the physical things teach you something spiritual. I'll tell you, <laughs> when I came down here 42 years ago, it was not my intention to stick around. It was not my intention. Forty-two years. Can you believe it? Making wise the simple. Now this article here, Deb, can you read what you need to read there? Uh, I mean, is it just that paragraph? You have nothing underlined. Well, um, here, I'll tell you what. Just read this. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And read, read that. Okay. Okay? So this is National Geographic, 12 December 2018. And this is... So I read it back in November. Okay? I've been lugging it around. This is called Program... To change. Programmed to change, right? Is that what it says? Yes. Okay. Activation number one. Now, this is a first step. And it says activation. Go ahead. A caterpillar eats often and grows quickly. Now, we have it over here on this chart. Caterpillar, see it? See it? Yeah. Eats often and what them? Grows quickly. Grows quickly. They eat like pigs. That's all they do. Look, you're like you're a you're like a larva. We come down here and what do we do? <laughs> Lloyd's back there going. <laughs> we come down here and we we eat, uh -huh. and hopefully, see, we're not eating uh, potato chips and ice cream and candy. We're eating something that's good for us. We're eating no We're eating new nutritious stuff. Go ahead. It molts several times. It molts several times. Now, what is that? It sheds skin. It's grown. So we're shedding stuff. Okay? You call it what you want. We're shedding something. Okay? There's stuff that's got to get shedded. There's a lot of shedding going on. Huh. 
<laughs> Go ahead. Each mold marking a new larval stage until it reaches maturity. Then its hormones shift. Then its hormones shift. Its hormones shift. Okay? Go ahead. Signaling the onset, onset of the chrysalis phase. Now it signals the onset of the chrysalis stage. Is that stage number two? No, I'm not there yet. Oh, you're not there yet. Number two is transformation. No. Okay. So it's signaling the onset of the chrysalis stage. So, the you see, the chrysalis is right here. See it? There's the caterpillar, the larva, okay? And here, now all of a sudden, the hormones, there's a change in the hormones. Like when, <laughs> when, uh, we, we used to live over on Arthur Street. We had a, we had a little apartment, you know? And um, uh, Tess was almost two years old. Uh, she was a lot easier to handle back then, tell you. And um, my wife got pregnant with Patrick and she said, we got to get a bigger place. We got to get a bigger place. And so we started going and looking for places. And we were looking for places and, and uh, we went to this one place and we went in the bathroom and there was, there was no toilet. There was just a hole in the floor and you could see into the basement. She goes, I love it, I love it. She went, there was a hormone shift. <laughs> she had to get out of that little apartment. You know what I mean? So I know just what those little larvae are going through there. But go ahead. Number two, transformation. Now number two, transformation. This is what we've been talking about. We have been undergoing a transformation down here in these classes. Sitting right on the seat. We look the same, except we've got a little older. <laughs> I have. Okay. You gals haven't. You gals look the same. But... Inside, something's going on. There's an inner man. And somebody talked earlier, they said, uh, I think it was Carm, they were teaching, you know, body, soul, and spirit in a body, soul, and spirit. And then sometimes they had it in another body, soul, and spirit. It got crazy. I, I know, I got a lot of the notes still in my file somewhere about that stuff, but you, you couldn't, you couldn't even make sense of it. And you would try to make sense of it because sometimes you thought, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something's the matter with me, but it just didn't make any sense. The founder taught that you are body, soul, and spirit. And he taught that because the book teaches that your body, soul, and spirit. And sometimes he would say, and your pneuma, somat, pneuma, psyche, and soma. He would call it that, which is the Greek, I think. 
Okay? He would repeat that all the time. He never said that inside of something else, inside of something else. Never. Never. I've read lots of his lectures. So the soul part, that's the part that it says in the scripture there, the law of Yahweh is perfect. We talked about that. That's Yahshua. Converting the soul. The soul is a part of you. The inner man. That needed to be converted. When we came into class, it had to undergo a conversion process. It had to change. Something had to be cast out. Something had to be, there had to be a hormonal change. Do you understand? This is, you know, it's such, it's such beautiful stuff. And you try to make it as simple as you possibly can. The inner man, and we, we point to it all the time. We go over here and we show the skeleton, don't we? Yeah. How the vertebrae, how many vertebrae are there? 33 vertebrae showing the age of Yahshua, right? And this is our what? Upright. Uprightness. Right. Or Yahshua is our uprightness. And many of the little bones up here, the cervical bones, and the thoracic bones, they resemble little lambs and little sheep and stuff that, that were sacrificed on this altar. You can read about this in the textbook. It's interesting stuff. The skeleton shows a whole lot. Now the skull is always grinning. It's always, you never see a skull with a frown. And like, like an emoji with a frown, right? <laughs> Do you ever see a skull with a frown? Nope. Why? Because they're happy to the shed. They're happy to molt. <laughs> that's, that's showing the inner man. Don't we always say the skeleton lasts in the ground? Sometimes centuries. While well, the skin disappears in no time. Because this is very permanent. But what's inside of you, that inner man that's going to go on, that's undergoing that change, that's going to last. That's going on. And down here, it's undergoing a change. I know I'm repeating. I'm, I'm drilling this and drilling this and drilling this. I don't, who knows who's watching this? Okay? Now, uh, go ahead and read, Deb. I'm sorry. Once it's big enough, a caterpillar finds a safe spot and often attaches itself to it with silk. A final molt reveals a shell called a chrysalis. Inside, the insect changes dramatically. Now, it, it attaches itself like it's got a tiny, tiny little connection. Mm -hmm. Tiny. Didn't you have one in your house? 
Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you had butter. Yeah, you had chrysalis in your house. And I've painted where I've found them under eaves and stuff, you know? And the, the monarch butterfly, its chrysalis has a, a gold crown around it. It's amazing. It's got a gold crown around it. And that it once it's in this stage, it attaches itself. Mm -hmm. And then, what'd you say about changes? The insect changes dramatically. It changes dramatically. Now those, those hormones, everything starts just changing. <clears throat> changing. It undergoes dramatic changes. Mm -hmm. I have read other articles mm -hmm. where it says it undergoes dramatic changes. Okay? Metamorphosis. Transformation. Transfiguration. There's a lot of synonyms. They all mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. You have to undergo a change. You have to undergo a conversion. That's a conversion process in that chrysalis. Right or wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Changes dramatically in preparation for adult life. Number three, emergence. The butterfly now we got step number three. How many steps are there? This is the last step. There's, there's only three steps? How about that? Look, look. You had the first step, right? Right? Yeah. Larval? Chrysalis? Butterfly. One, two, three. Three steps in metamorphosis. Now there's more in this article here. Anybody wants to look at this afterwards? There's all kinds of little details and stuff like that. We're just reading these simple parts here. Go ahead. Chrysalis breaks open. Sucks in air. Sucks in air. What's air? Spirit. Spirit. What does the baby suck in? Huh? Spirit of life. Yeah. Tell you, the boss knows what he's doing. Yeah. Go ahead. It then flaps its wings for several hours. It flaps its wings for several hours. To dry them and to circulate blood before flying off in search of a mate. In search of a mate. Hmm. <laughs> Butterfly, first thing he's got on his mind. Look. Search of a mate. And look, what do they power their wings with? Sunlight. The sun. The sun. Solar. Tell you, it's pretty. One, two, three steps. Now just get for me, if you would. Um, get Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Um, uh, just uh, let me let me expedite some time. Just pick it up in the seventeenth verse there. Ephesians four and seventeen. This I say, therefore, and testify. 
signify in Yahweh that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. This, now you got to listen. When you have an opportunity, read what it says before this, okay? So you'll understand why he says that, uh, that why he's suggesting that they walk not as other Gentiles walk. Now, he's not trying to tell them how to behave. That's not what's going on here. Everybody understand? He's not setting down carnal ordinances here. It's not what he's doing. It's not what Paul's doing. Read. That you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. In the vanity or what? Mm -hmm. Emptiness. Emptiness of their minds. Emptiness. Oh, what'd you give me for Christmas? Emptiness. Read. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them. Being alienated from the life of Elohim. Through the ignorance that is in them. Read. Because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart. He's talking about a situation here. Pre larva. Okay. Read. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness yes. with greediness. Look, you don't ever. You don't, there's a reason why your body feels pain. It feels pain because it's trying to tell you, hey, something's wrong. Right. When, you, when you can't feel pain, that's not good. Because something can be wrong with you and you won't know it. When, let's flip that into the spirit. Your creator has given you a conscience so that when it bothers you, you know, hey, leave it alone. When you get to the point where you justify everything so much that you've grown past feeling, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. And I could tell you a story, too, that uh, Mitch told us one time. He said, you know, when you put toast in, in the toaster, he says, and it, you like it to come out a certain way, golden brown or whatever, he says. And sometimes it would just stay in there too long or you'd forget about it and you'd come back and it would be black. He said, you try to scrape it off, but <laughs> no, you, you got to throw it away. He says, because it's just no good. He says, that's having grown past feeling. Mm -hmm. I never forget that. Oh, my God, we're having, I don't even, having, I don't even remember where we were having class down on the south side someplace. Go ahead and read. 20, but you have not so learned from Messiah, if so be that you have heard him. And have but been this isn't the way we've learned in class. See, this isn't how we've been taught in class. Read. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Yahshua. The truth is in Yahshua. Read. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. The old, the, the old manner of life. When it says conversation, it means the old manner of life. The old way that you used to live. Or act. Do you understand? Read. Which is corrupt through 
corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit. Look, be what? Renewed. Be what? Renewed. Renewed. You got to be renewed. And he's telling who to be renewed. He's telling them to be renewed, isn't he? Yes. He's not telling them to get another, a, a new body, soul, and spirit and try to cram it in here. Your soul, your soul has to undergo a renewal process. It's not talking about your body. You're going to have aches and pains and you go, but you're going to go through all kinds of stuff. But your soul, it's got to be renewed. Renewed. I paint houses. I spent this summer scraping a shipwreck. It was a mess. We didn't burn a house down and build another house. We scraped it. We primed it, we patched it, we fixed it up, and we painted it that looks like new. It's renewed. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is a house. It houses the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And that you put on the new man. Uh, see, there's a new man. I don't mean this. Inside, new man, new person, new soul. It's the old soul converted. That, that's what makes it new. That conversion, what we just read about that butterfly, it's the same thing. It's the physical revealing the spiritual. Read. And that you put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness. That it? Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, mm -hmm. we are members one of another. We are what? Members. Family. Yes. One of another. That's right. Very nice. Very nice. Just go to, give me Galatians 4, 4 chapter, 5, I think the fifth verse. Galatians 4 and 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. To redeem. Well, you might have to pick it up, Deb. Yeah, four. Verse 4. Well, when the fullness of time was come. When the fullness of time was come. Now, <laughs> see, everything is according to time. Right? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit had to be poured out in 33 A.D. That's when it was poured out. <coughs> Excuse me. And again in 40 A.D. That was the time. That when the time was right. Read. Elohim sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Made under the law. He had to fulfill the Hebrew law. And in doing so, he ended the Hebrew law. In the eyesight of Yahweh. Read. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them. There had to be a redeeming process that went on. Now, you should ask yourself, well, what was redeemed? What was redeemed? 
the soul. That soul. So I'm going to thank you very much. There's only about 20 minutes left. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to leave. It's not a lot of time, but um, it's enough to leave. We'll go to five after because we started a little late, okay? And um, I'm going to ask Dr. Scott Miller to come up here. And I want to thank you very much for your patience. I hope that I know that uh, this isn't a new topic, but I hope that it was interesting. I hope that you were edified. And uh, all praise be to Yahshua. Good evening, class. That was a shocker. I thought I was off the hook after Rick was off. The <laughs> Surprise. I would have thought 20 years ago, 20 minutes, oh my God, I can't do 20. Now I'm like, how much time do we have? All right, let's go to the scripture. I enjoyed the testimony of the previous speakers very much. Um, we're talking about converting the soul. See, when I first came to class, it was taught that, you know, I didn't know if you had a soul or not a soul, but the book says you have a soul. It's in, if you want to get it, First Thess 5 and 23, I think. And guess what? It goes by the pattern. And as Rick pointed out, so does metamorphosis. One, two, three. Most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. One, two, three. Nice and simple. So the mystery of iniquity can't handle something being simple. He's got to, you know, they were trying to add a fourth thing in there. A spirit, soul, body, and then a body. See, that just doesn't work because it doesn't go by the pattern. And these demonic spirits that were cast out, they ended up in the garden. One, we always talk about Satan, you know. We, we can stick with him. But most, most incarn the incarnation of Demonic spirits, you know, we're not aware of these things. You know, we talk about Satan, but he's, he's safe for important people. Like Peter or, you know, other world leaders. <laughs> Big people, you know. But See, but he's inhabiting our most holy place, and that's why we're in darkness. And he's not our soul. These demonic spirits are not our soul. They, didn't need, they need to go. But they're not who we were. And see, that's what was taught when I first came to class, that you were these things, you, not that you were under the influence of them. And see, your soul has to be cleansed or converted, as it says in the scripture. You know, and we can't do that ourselves. Any more than a baby can be born on its own. We were talking about this earlier today, because Frank and I have been watching different classes in our, in our own camp, we'll say, where people are talking about a lot of you got to do this and you got to do that. And when you look at a baby, what does a baby have to do to be born? What does a baby have to do? We're talking being born or being converted is like being born again. You know, and when Nicodemus came to Yahshua and said, we know you are Elohim from heaven. Well, how does a man get back in his mother's? How does he be born again? You know, see, Yahshua has to give us that nature, you know. You have to have that proper attitude. And the baby didn't do anything to get it. He didn't put himself in that position to get born. You know, he's just in a death-like state and goes from death unto life. And it's all handled on its own. Yahshua takes care of it all. That's just a process we all go through. Go ahead there with it. First Thessalonians 5.23 And the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, Elohim, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua right. the Messiah. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Now, when it talks of... Um, let's get to Scripture, Psalms. When it talks about converting the soul... Mm -hmm. See, we all have Yahweh pure. That's the spirit. 
we all have Yahweh pure spirit, but that's really not enough to save everyone, or else everyone would be saved. You know, but everyone in the world isn't saved, you know. So you need more of the spirit, and that's the law of the spirit of life, and that's what kicks out the demonic spirits. And see, again, that's nothing we do on our own. We can't clean our own selves up, you know. You can't, be, can't birth yourself. You can't get in the proper attitude as a baby. You have to be born head first, because if you're, if you're born the opposite way, it's like a breech birth, and you're in trouble. Or if your umbilical cord's wrapped around your neck and you're not getting that oxygen that you need, like that butterfly in the chrysalis, if he doesn't get that oxygen, it's not going to be able to be birthed or, or be, to be converted and, and to be resurrected out of there. See? So, go ahead. Um, Psalms 19 and 7. They could start at 1. Start at 1. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, mm -hmm. and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Right, we can look, and Rick talked about the expanse of the heavens, and we can look out, and Romans 1, 19 and 20 was called. See, but we're, we're using Romans 1, 19 and 20 to, we use the butterfly, and we use the, um, the physical creation to show how the operation of Yahshua is through in the universe, goes by with the sun being up in the most holy place and all the other planets accordingly through here. This is like a tabernacle for the sun. And, it is, and we talked about Wednesday how the Catholic Church, they didn't want to hear that the sun was the center of the universe. See, they thought earth was the center. Just how when we come into class, we think we're the center of the universe and it's about us. And we think that, well, when we hear this information presented that I'll decide whether I like it, and if I like it, I'll stay, and if I don't like it, well, I'll leave. You know, I don't want to hear what they have to say. See, but we're taken prisoner, you know, against our will, if for a good thing, you know. And it's nothing we're doing. If you see this gospel, hallelujah, that you saw the witnesses, and it wasn't you doing it. It wasn't you understanding it. It was Yahshua in you showing you these things, and Yahshua in the person on the floor teaching you these things. So he's doing all the work. See, keep going. Four, their line has gone out through all the earth, and their right. words to the end of the world. In them hath he set the tabernacle for the sun. Right. In this tabernacle, see, there's lines. There's, there's steps in it. We went through seven steps. There's seven dispensations. See, there's lines through here, line upon line, line upon line. Lines going through, and see, he's working his purpose down through the dispensation of ages coming down and he's building his bride and it's coming down through the time and we talked about that now after Pentecost was the first time where the Holy Spirit was permanently in man and see when you're permanently in, and he's permanently in man you're sealed in that and then nothing else can get back in just like up in, when we I talked about how mystery of iniquity was cast down and, the, and then they believed the lie and were cast out but see, there was something, Michael's here, he's got his flaming sword. See, that, that garden, they couldn't get back up in there on their own. That was sealed. That, just how, when he comes out of here, uh, once you get first Thess 4, I think, where he's sitting in the temple. Second Thess, Second Thess is it? Two and, uh, well, I was close. <laughs> Had the right book. Let no man deceive you by any means that that day shall not come except right. there shall be a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. See, that man of sin had to be revealed the son of perdition. Go ahead. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worship right. so that he as Elohim He opposes and exalts himself above all. You know, so he wants to be where Yahshua is. Yeah, that's where he wants to be, you know. And sitting up here, see, everyone has Yahweh pure spirit up here. So he wants to be up here too. See, but once that happens, see, you're sealed, you know. That, that, that high priest and that we talked about, Karm talked about that circuit, you know. There's a circuit just like Yahshua coming out of pure spirit into shape and form. And then he took on a physical form here. 
It's all the same. That was a circuit or like a round trip and it's going back up. And he's not going back alone and by himself. He's gathering, he's gathering together in one all things and he's going to be coming back with fruit, with the sons. And that's, all, that's his bride, all the souls we're talking about saved with the Holy Spirit. So you're not going to get judged when you die, you know, and then based on your good deeds, because I was t talked about how you get to heaven, you can't, you can't get the Holy Spirit on your own. And you're not judged. You've come to find out that's a big mystery, that you had to be sealed in the Holy Spirit while you're alive, while you're in the flesh, and have this gospel preached, and the Holy Spirit put in you, and you're sealed in that, and that way the mystery of iniquity can't, I'm not saying he's not going to mess with you anymore, but he's not going to deceive you anymore. That's a big difference, being messed with by the mystery of iniquity and, and, have, and being deceived. Right. See, being deceived is like an internal thing where you can't, you can't see the truth, you know, because something's there and that has to go, not your soul. Your soul has to, like Rick with the paint in the houses. And I love, you know, much of Genesis, man, I love watching car shows. That, that, and I can't really work on cars, but I love watching these shows, and there's quite a few of them, where they restore cars. Right. And for convert, and my margin says restore, and but Rick does, he, in these old houses, he restores them. Mm -hmm. And when you restore a car, you take it down to its bones. In most of the old cars, now they have unibodies, it's called, where the frame and the body's all together, but if you have an older school SUV or an older car, they all had frames. And you would take this down right to its frame, to its bones, mm -hmm. like the soul. And there's like a ladder. It's line upon line. And you, you sandblast it and you go take it all apart. You don't throw it. You know, you might replace a part here and there that needs to be replaced, but it's a similar. And you put it back together. And it looks like some of these people do amazing jobs on these cars. Mm -hmm. And they're worth a lot of money, and they sell, and they, you know, and they're, they look like brand new. They've been totally converted and totally restored, like back to new, you know. Because when we came in, we were shipwrecks. <laughs> we needed a savior. We didn't know it. We thought we knew. We, we thought we. I didn't think I, my soul needed to be converted. I didn't think I had any kind of demonic, you know, inhabitation. I mean, that just just to even say that out loud in, in public. It sounds so bizarre and weird, but yeah, it, it's, you know, it's true. It's true. You know, we had these things in us, keeping us from the purpose of Yahweh, you know, until Yahshua. So let's read about, that's what we're talking about in Thess here, how it operates. And see, that has to go, that man of sin. So that he is Elohim sits in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Right. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? See, he told them these things. He explained it, but they didn't get it. You know, they didn't see it. Um, is that it there? Let's go back to the scripture then and get down to... Five. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man on a race. Right, because this is a race. And it says in Hebrews... I think it's 12 and 1, if you want to get that, Deb, it talks about how we're running a race. Right. You know, and we got to, and it, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, and we got to hang in there to the end. Yeah. You know, but again, that's something you're not doing on your own. Mm -hmm. Yashua is there for us, helping us through it to the end. Uh, keep going in the scripture. Yep. Yeah. Um, his going forth through is is from the end of the heaven mm -hmm. and is circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. Right. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. And we had it, go ahead, read in Hebrews, and if you want to get um, uh, Romans 8 and 1. Well, uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside right. every weight. And then we talk about all the witnesses in the heavens. The heavens declare the glory. That's all witnesses in Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. See, we're encompassed about a great cloud of witnesses. Right. So, he can, so we're without excuse. Mm -hmm. Read. And the sin which does so easily beset mm -hmm. us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before right. us. Right, let's run with patience the race that is set before us. 
read. Looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith. Look, looking unto Yahshua. He's the author and the finisher, or the originator and per perfecter. Or he's, he fulfilled, he authored, mm -hmm. he started, mm -hmm. and he finished it. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say that on the cross? It is finished. He's doing the whole thing. You know, we have him. We have him many times as a man in here, and you know, uh, a vision up here, and then you know, invisible up in the sky. You see, but he's he's more ever present than we ever realized. He's right within each and every one of us. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you have more of the Creator than the rest of the world, and that's really what sets us apart. Mm -hmm. And that's what the law of the Spirit of Life is. Go ahead. <coughs> Before mm -hmm. him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand right. of the throne of Elohim. The joy that was set before him. The jo How would you call that? He called it the joy that was set before him. Go ahead. And In, uh, Romans. Romans. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua's right. Messiah. And Rick talked about now, and that's that now again after Pentecost. After the death, burial, and resurrection, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Who we'll walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the Spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah. Right. The law of the Spirit of life. Now, it, it is the same, you know, I know this is a difficult thing to understand, how we're spirit, soul, and body, but not everyone has the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. that is the Spirit. <sighs> Why don't you get, where is it, the high, is it Isaiah 50, the high and lofty one that's yeah, in secret? Yeah, yeah. That kind of explains it a little bit. And then if you want to keep reading there and uh, yeah. with the law of spirit of life there. Because the that's the Holy Spirit. That's what's available. That's but now. after See, the law of the spirit of life wasn't available on the permanent basis. He was operating back here, he, you know, in... in Got in people, told them what to say, told them how to build things, showed them things, you know, but it, then it would leave, you know, until he was glorified. And it says that when Yahshua was talking to the woman at the well about the Holy Spirit and what water is like. And he says that, you know, water is like the Holy Spirit and you, you will never, you will never thirst again because the water he gives you is eternal. He said, but... He goes, but now, he goes, then he talked about how it's in Pentecost. After Pentecost, it will be permanent. But before that, that it wasn't permanent because he hadn't risen yet. And then he hadn't fulfilled, you know, because he had to go through that death, burial, resurrection, and the outpouring. It hadn't been Pentecost yet. And he was, you know, of course, she didn't understand that at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, people now don't understand that. But that that's, that's one of the mysteries. See, but now, after Pentecost, go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah mm -hmm. has made me free from the law of right. sin Right, made death. you free from the law of sin and death. See, we're not making ourselves free. He's making, you know, and, and you will know the truth, and the truth will not set you free, but you make you free. free. You were made free. Right. Go ahead. And I also want to get in Hebrews, too, because I was thinking Wednesday night about some of this in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and how that... What do we have? Five minutes? Okay. Ooh, that's going to be tough. <laughs> All right, what do we got? The high and lofty one. Yes, let's get that. Fifty-seven, fifteen. For thus saith the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place mm -hmm. with him also who right. is of a contrite and humble spirit. He dwells in the high and holy place. Yeah. See, it, he's... He's been in each and every one of us in, in a mystery. That's how, that's what, you know, that's how our body knows what to do. That's how the animals know where to go. That's what spirit law is. He's referencing spirit law. But that law of the spirit of life, after Pentecost, has a different function, and it's, and it's saving souls. And when he's saving a soul, he's sealing it, and that mystery of iniquity can't get back in there anymore. Any more than the baby can get back in the womb. Can a baby get back in the mother's womb? Or a man? No. That just sounds silly, but really it, that's, how, that's just that witness. Any more than uh, when Adam and, Adam and Eve were driven out and Michael was at that, at that garden, nothing can get back up here. And 
See, on the Day of Atonement, when that high priest went up here, see, and made atonement and came back down, you know, the mystery of iniquity couldn't be up here for the flash of the Shekinah. He didn't see. He wasn't, you know, but he was waiting. He said when he came down, I guess Doc would talk about when, when that high priest came down out of that most holy place, the mystery of iniquity was right, in, right on the other side of that veil. But when, the, when we're sealed in that, see, nothing can get back up in there. Um, what are we holding? Anything? So I want to get over to Hebrews. Okay. Quick. Hebrews um, now, we probably should have called how your body is the temple and that kind of stuff, 1 Corinthians 6.19. Right. And that, to show that, you know, what's on this chart here. But we're going to try to, we're, we're going to assume that we know that and stuff and that people have watched and, you know, hopefully have somewhat of a foundation. Because now with YouTube, you don't know who's watching, so we kind of all have to teach a little different where you have to teach sort of foundational, sort of, because you don't know who's watching. So I found that, you know, I noticed that in all of us where our teaching style's changing a little bit because you're worried about, you know, what's on. Maybe some newer people trying to understand this and what's going on. Um... Hebrews, we were in 7 Wednesday, when, oh boy, Hebrews 8 and, just started 8 and 1. Hebrews 8 and 1, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. So you're going to have to read the previous chapters to get, <laughs> but this is the sum, total of it, read. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty right. Now he's not talking about this high priest. See, this is this is see how he's got these garments of beauty and glory. And these these priests, these are low priests. They're just white. It's just that they didn't paint them. See, that was the special garments for the high priest. He couldn't go into this. That set him apart. See, this is, we were like the low priests, and Yahshua was the high priest. Go ahead. A minister of the sanctuary. See, he's a minister of the sanctuary. And Read. of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched, do not man. Right, and we talked about the. Yahweh pitching the universe right. and operating, and the, the heavens declared the glory of, the, uh, of Al, and how he's like a bridegroom coming out of the tabernacle, and that's a nice witness because he's coming down through the dispensation and ages. We're his bride, and he's like the bridegroom, and he's leading us down through time to, to, into the next, into the kingdom age. Go ahead. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Mm -hmm. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Right. Seeing if he were on earth, he should not be a priest after that priesthood. Right. Go ahead. Seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, mm -hmm. who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Yahweh Elohim right. when he was about to make the tabernacle. See, these are like examples and shadows of heavenly things. Read. For I'll see, try to saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. Right. Keep reading. Read but down now, to seven. But now hath he obtained a more There's that but now. But ministry. now, after Pentecost... Yeah. He's obtained a more excellent ministry. And that's an internal ministry where he's in our tabernacle. Go ahead. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Right. He's the mediator of the covenant, not Mary, not your priest, Yahshua. Read. Which was established upon better promises. Better pro right. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Right. So if that first covenant had been faultless or without fault, or this old covenant, if this had been faultless, the, the sacrifice and the animals, and it, there shouldn't be any place. This just We'll just end there and marinate on that. That if this was faultless, there wouldn't have been a place, a need for the new covenant, which is permanent, which is Yahshua in you, mm -hmm. our only hope of salvation. Right. Thank you with that. I hope if someone got some out of that, I'll praise Yahshua. Thank you, Scott. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Welcome you all back. We're here every Wednesday at 7.30 and every Saturday at 7 o'clock. And if we could all rise to be dismissed by the doxology. <coughs> I'll be reading the doxology in 
from the last two verses of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say in unity, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.